can bartending skills improve sales skills let me repeat how can bartending skills improve sales skills so as you prepare to delve into our conversation on the topic at hand here is an exciting twist first let us tickle the brain of our guest neil roger neil get ready for a rapid fire round of random words i'll mention a few and i would love to hear the first thing that comes to your mind in response are you ready for it ready let's have it naveen <laughs> i love the spirit and let me fire the first word curiosity music invention musk future ai <laughs> book how to win friends and influence people yeah i think it is still in the top trending chart for the last 6 to 7 decades yeah <laughs> Yeah, oh, you said it all. Let's do it again, Navi. <laughs> Very true. And the movie, The Magnificent Seven. Awesome food. Uh, salmon. Matter of fact, I had it last night. Ah, nice. And place, Plymouth, Massachusetts, America's hometown. Hmm. And the next one is name other than Neil. Mary, my mother. Oh wow! Animal. Uh, I'm not a big animal guy, but I'll pick dog. Because there's just so many in this complex here. Everybody's got a dog. Yeah, and the last one is world. Well, amen. Peace. Mm, awesome. And thank you so much for participating so sportively, Neil. I appreciate it. And folks, welcome to the Guiding Voice podcast series, where we embark on transformative conversations for a better future. I'm your host, Navin Samala. dedicated to making the world a better place through valuable discussions that add value not only to your life but also to your career and thank you so much for tuning in and neil hearty welcome to the guiding voice super thrilled to have you here and engage in this conversation glad to be here naveen got that <laughs> let's let's chat let's chat let's chat and here comes my first question uh, can you share a bit more about your background and how your journey from bartending to sales person has influenced your perspective on life as well as work well the whole bartending thing was really a journey for me it started out as uh uh i really had no clue what i was going to do i was aimless at you know i got out of high school at 17 years old so i was young and and very immature and really not ready for for the next step and uh but i was also the seventh of eight uh children and um so it uh the journey from th- the discovery of what i could be good at was my first discovery and that mm-hmm. be, you know because i wasn't a great student i was a middle of the road student i always joked that my sat my combined sat scores and my class rank had one thing in common and they were both in the triple digits Nobody nobody was going to Harvard I'm telling you that right. <laughs> but I but I did take a swing at school and mm-hmm. I and I did okay but you know I didn't have much passion for it I mean where I went was more or less a continue, I didn't really know my why I was doing it and all that so I really kind of fizzled out and uh, all the while I've been working in the hospitality business uh, doing you know back of the house stuff I worked in the kitchen uh, bus boy making sandwiches, cooking breakfast, those types of things. And then I made my way out front uh as a bar back. So the bar backs are the guys that are doing all the work, right? They get in the yeah. beer, they get in the ice, they get in the empty in the trash and all that. And it was really it was really tough work. And I mm-hmm. I watched but I would watch the bartenders work and I thought that was really cool. So my first foray into the bartending world was just because I thought it looked cool. Right. There was no you know, career career thought process going on. You know, uh, I, probably the same reason why I used to play what I what, what I love to play sports. I mean, hopefully to meet a cheerleader. Right. So, yeah, it you know, wasn't about the competition or anything else. And so uh, so I did set out after after failing at school, I did set out to get a bar job because I and I wanted to try it and um, eventually got behind the bar in a place. called the Full Sail in Whitehorse Beach, Massachusetts, which is a part of Plymouth, mm-hmm. Mass. And I um I discovered pretty early on that the reaction I got from customers, mm-hmm. the immediate feedback, 
I liked. Right? Good <laughs> or bad. And yeah. Of course, you really like the good first. I yeah. Said, oh, they really like the drink and they like my service and all that. So I realized that, that I was going, I would be, my my life's work could be serving people, you know, serving in some form of fashion. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I, 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 I set my own. So I'll be in the hotel restaurant business. Okay. So I went back to hotel restaurant school. Another swing and a miss, right? I decided that that this was not going to be my life's work. And, you know, let's just say also I was distracted in school. It wasn't just about, you know, not lack of vision. But, uh, but so people would tell me when the people that I, you know, my customers at the, at the, at the bar would say, you know, your interpersonal skills would really lend itself nice to sales. Wow. Mm. Okay. So now <laughs> I've been good at one thing, so I know mm. I know now my self esteem is back. Yeah, I can mm-hmm. pour drinks. I can treat people. I, I treat people nicely. I introduce them to people. I can mm. tell them where to go. Uh, I can recommend things, and just like you know, mm. all, overall general interpersonal skills. And I was always I was also pretty self aware too of my own of my own my own limitations, and I to this day I am. Um, so they, um, uh, I went. I set my sights on on getting getting my degree now mm-hmm. that i had a focus i had i had a little bit of momentum going for me I so i went back to school and i became a very good student mm-hmm. i got my little what do we call it in today's i have a, i call it a process i'm old school but i think in today's parlance it's an algorithm right yeah yeah my algorithm was to get to be good at school was to show up to actively mm. listen take notes mm-hmm. to ask for help when i needed it to go to go the extra uh, mile to do the extra credit stuff so that when the when when it came down to whether you were going to get the b plus or the a minus you got the a minus right <laughs> so this this how does this play in the sales world well what's the most po- what's the most important thing actively listening okay take notes Listen to what the pain points are. Don't make it about you. It's about them. Get them to speak about themselves. And this goes back to our friend in my my book, Dale Carnegie. Right? So actively listen. Let them, let yeah. them talk about themselves. Yeah. Don't, don't be so anxious to tell them all about your products and your services and how great you are. It's like, listen. Take the time. And mm. that's, that's a bartending skill from way back. Yeah. You know, it's not about you. They're coming into your establishment. They're sitting at your bar. Ask them about how their day is. What What is it you prefer today? What are you thinking about doing after you leave here? Yeah. Can I make a suggestion? So the Red Sox are in town. I Fenway Park, even if they're not in town, I would suggest go take the Fenway Park tour. Mm-hmm. It's lovely. So yeah. it's simple things like that, that can mm-hmm. kind of shift. From the service industry, bartending, waitressing, you know, anything of that, you know, working retail, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, working retail. Let me, you know, the, the, the greatest help you, you used to be able to, well, now it's shifted back to the the uh, downtown department um, uh, uh, hardware store. Mm. You used to go to Home Depot. When you went into Home Depot, there'd be a sea of people in orange aprons there to help you. Now they're hiding on you. So guess what? You go back to the local guy, you walk through the door. Hey, what's going on? How can I help you? Let me bring you over. What's your project? So they 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 are they they engage in hospitality. So it's all about, you know, the bartender, the crossover is the hospitality. You mm-hmm. know, this, you know, the 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 uh, how you're making somebody feel. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think um, you've covered your success mantra as well, right? So in terms of active listening, understanding the pain points and then uh, taking notes and most importantly coming up with some suggestions and providing it to uh, the customer right so i i think this is a great perspective and uh, as i started listening to you i think um, there is a lot of uh, uh, eye opening stuff coming out so which is great and now let's uh, shift gears and talk about the book like what inspired you to write the bar tips everything i needed to know in sales i learned behind the bar so how did the idea for this book come about 
Well, number one, it was a COVID project. Mm. Right? So, yeah. And I think like most of us, yeah. we were looking for projects and things to do <laughs> to not help us not drive ourselves crazy, right? Yeah. And ironically enough, I went to dinner. I live here on a, 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 a golf course campus now. Mm. I went up to had dinner up at the local restaurant here right on right on campus. And I wound up, I saw some old friends. I wound up, I wound up going over and having dinner with them. And I looked over on the bar and who's there? Mm. The guy who inspired me to write the book. Wow. I haven't seen him in four years, three or four years. We talk all the time. We text. He's, 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 uh, he's very successful. Uh, back again, he's, he, uh, he had, he, uh, he had, uh, he had a life-saving surgery, uh, because his initial success took him to, you know, behaviors that, Made him need the life life saving surgery, but he's 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 an amazing man, and he's very big into AI. So he's doing mm -hmm. a lot of training in AI. Mm -hmm. So, but we share. So we both shared last night, though, you know, because my thing is when I talk about my book, and I'll get back to the process in yeah. a second. I say one of my talks is tech is no threat to me. I'm not afraid yeah. Of I, mm. at least it, it's certainly not at this stage of my life, right? Yeah. Uh, but but anyway, so when we had our when during COVID, when we would have I would have these daily reach outs. One of the things that we prescribe in our in our program called Positive Activity, which is there's a chapter on it in the book, is you know to get your mindset right in the morning. You should there's a number of things that can do you can do to get it right before you start your day and one is a reach out check in with an old friend yeah so in, in, in this case i was doing it yeah i was doing it for their you know to, they're all they're thinking that well thanks neil for reaching out and i just, mm. this isn't altruistic i'm doing this for me too right <laughs> so anyway so terry terry winds up it, invariably back then i would get yeah. a call back too so terry calls me back and he tells me about his his journey over the last eighteen months since he had this uh, life saving surgery. Mm -hmm. He tells me about this book he wrote and this, that, and the other thing. I was just I was blown away. Terry, jeepers creepers, you've done so much in the last eighteen months, and it was impressive and and all that. And he says you should write a book. Said, what am I? Mm -hmm. yeah, I got a nice <laughs> life. I don't owe anybody anything, and you know, and, and we 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 live well, and you know, we've been very successful in our in our lanes. You know, and we've always been independent, small business people and, and pretty successful at it. Mm -hmm. I started I started thinking about it and I'd done some writing on uh, one of the places that I mentioned earlier, the full sale, uh, because we had just had a birthday party for one of our guys. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a very nostalgic and emotional uh, party because it just brought us all back there, you know. And um, so I ha I wrote something on that. And then I had written something on uh, uh, this place, White Horse Beach, which is where, um, where which is where the full sale was. Mm. And I, uh, so I had those two pieces. I had done some research on hot because uh, I had this hospitality my thing in my head for a while. Yeah, yeah. And I had done some research on how other other companies use mm -hmm. hospitality and engagement, whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. to with their customers. Yeah, you know, uh, there's a like there's a. Um, a men's store in in Georgia, in Atlanta, I believe, that's got a gumball machine mm, mm -hmm. on the way out the door. Yeah. Now <laughs> it's fun, right? Yeah, yeah. It's it's it, it's hospital. Hey, have a gumball on the way out. You know, whatever it may be. So we were at uh, my daughter again back here on campus. My daughter was being honored by the Chamber of Commerce mm. as someone that um, was you know she was at the time she was under thirty. And she was like, uh, I don't know, I don't know where you're at, but I'm sure you're involved with the chamber. I've been to a chamber event. You know, they've got an award for everything. Well, mm -hmm. Her award was you know, the people to watch under 30. So we went to the we went to the event, mm -hmm. and uh, there was a gentleman who brought five guys burgers. Oh, mm -hmm. he was mm -hmm. yeah, and he was a very he was a very good speaker, very nuts and bolts. Plain talk, less is more, and that's my style. I said, I yeah. you know, I, I just, I, you know, I don't want to break out the 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 thesaurus, 
and try to understand what you're saying yeah, Give it to me in, you know, in, in plain language. And, and one of the books I, I read in order to write this book was a book called on writing. Well, and mm. that's his philosophy, short sentences, no big words, say it like mm-hmm. you mean it. So this guy, he talked about how, uh, I don't know if you ever worked in hospitality at all, but for those of your listeners that have, you'll probably remember pre-meal. Pre-meal is where they got the, the servers together or the team together, or whatever it may be, and they talk about what is out, you know, uh, what the specials are, you know, what's what what be what what might be coming tonight, who might you know might be big parties, whatever that mm-hmm. may be, mm-hmm. right? and then they give a little bit of a rah rah speech, right? Mm. Let's go have let's go have a great night, whatever that may be. Well, his speech was to his team. This is five guys burgers. He'd say, "We we are not." In the burger business, we're not in the fry business. We're not mm. in the shake business. We're not in the soda business. We're in the hospitality business. Now, for a point of context, my wife and I met at a place called Tia's in Boston. Well, I was a bartender and she was a food waitress. And we're in business to get, we, we've been, for the last 27 years, we've had a small marketing firm. And I looked at her and I said, I've never left the hospitality business. I've been bartending on the road. For mm-hmm. plus. So all the things. And then I started to research and interview and talk to people that I used to work with, people that own the places that I worked with, worked at, and uh, was just, uh, had a blast doing it. The writing part was was phenomenal. The interviewing part, you know, having a, having a two-hour conversation with this woman, Lori Lilly, who uh, was an amazing uh, woman, woman, and woman in business in Boston? You know, created an iconic restaurant mm-hmm. bar. Although uh, um, uh, the last time I was in there, it didn't look the same, but I'm sure it still does well. Um, so it was just so much fun and so enlightening. Mm-hmm. Now, the publishing process. That's not a <laughs> yeah, but anyway. So that's kind of how it all evolved. Mm, mm. And uh, we actually it, it went out on uh, Amazon in March. It's done very mm-hmm. well. The reviews have been very good. I'm getting, um, there isn't a day that goes by that I don't get a text or an email or wow. something from a friend or mm-hmm. post on Facebook or, or, or Instagram or whatever. That and, who, and knew, by- who knew from a, a guy who got uh, uh, you know, C in English? <laughs> very nice and uh, in fact uh, the guiding voice is also the covid project it all started uh, uh, in uh, may 2020 and from there there is no looking back and but the resemblance and i'm inspired by your uh, story it's so great well it's cool. uh, yeah. <laughs> let's move forward and uh, maybe it's you can a share your inspiration it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a, B, it's a c plus inspiration <laughs> but it does, prove it, out, it does prove out that if you if you stay diligent, yeah, being curious, yeah, you know, try to find what your niche is, yeah, you know, I, I and, and think back on things that you've learned that you've that you're gleaning right. from your parents, your teachers, your, whatever that means, mm. your little pearls of wisdom, you know, not not necessarily the <laughs> learning you did, but yeah, you know, what was that? Uh, you know what? What is what? Did, what did your grandfather tell you? And mm. Put it into practice. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, but, but in, in my opinion, inspiration is inspiration. Whether it is A or C or D or E, you did it, <laughs> and you are <were> inspiring. <laughs> Let's move forward, and uh, maybe you can also share how your experiences in bartending shape your approach to sales and business interactions. Well, it starts out back if you go back to my my struggles with school. And try to figure out, and also overcoming the inadequate feeling that I got from failing, it was believing in my process and staying with it. I think some of the most successful sales, most of this, I shouldn't say some of the most, all of the most successful salespeople I know follow a process. Now, they may tweak it, right? They'll make a change, this, that, and And that's what I profess this book to be is not an absolute. It's a, it's a roadmap. This is what worked for me. These things are, are I found interesting. I found these in a retrospect that these are the these are the, the tips that I gleaned from from my you know mm. retrospective look during a very difficult time for us, right? 
And so I would encourage everybody to 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 take to, to get, of course, to get buy the book, sure. And but also mm-hmm. find what 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 you would what what are what are what would what works for you. And then all of it is really kind of basic stuff. There's no complex marketing theory. Um, it's just kind of good, gentle nudge reminders of being nicer, smile, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. yeah, have some humor. Yeah, awesome. Now let's also elaborate on the soft skills you acquired as a as a bartender that proved invaluable in the carpet world. Well, I think well, I think the basics are I've always been a fundamentals guy. I I still can I still to this day can tell you the the fast break drill we did in high school in basketball. Outlet middle, fill the lanes, trailer. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Now, I don't even recognize what they do today. Honestly, it's like I don't even. It's like so. It's uh, that's a whole other kettle of fish. Uh, basketball ended when Larry Bird retired, as far as I'm concerned. But I would suggest that you know, I would suggest that you know that things like just giving a proper greeting, you know, introducing yourself properly, smile, nod listen to what they have to say let them talk I, I'm, I'm i'm talking about in social situations in in along with business situations you know who wants to who wants to be with the person that is just t- talking about them and their kids and this that you know, like, tell me about you so the first question, you know, how are you tell me about you what's going on today how's your business how's this how's, yeah, how's your yeah. family okay yeah good. tell me mm. elaborate more Oh, she's mm. going to, to Boston University. What's she going to be studying? Mm. Kidding. Fantastic. Can't wait. So now you're, but um, and and that and then, you know, so you're you're leaning in, you're nodding. So you're giving that great first impression. Yeah. And the other thing I would say to back up and back the truck up for a moment. For the love of Mike, show yeah. up on time. Yeah. Show up on time. You know what on time is, Naveen? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 15 minutes early. <laughs> don't True. be the people that are no, don't be the salesperson, the couple, the whatnot. Oh, mm. you no, know, they're always running late. Then you, yeah. you're, you're always the, you're always running rate, late sales guy. Oh, yeah. Mm. Neil's coming, but we know he's going to be 10 minutes late. Yuck, yuck, yuck. <laughs> Bad impression. You know, it doesn't, you know, it's just like you're always, and then, oh, my, you know, again, at mm. least I, I, you especially if you're meeting a customer for the first time, be properly dressed. Mm. Be overdressed. Yeah. You can, and you know the old adage. Yeah, you can never be overeducated or overdressed. So mm. think about your the, this in the in the book. There's a chapter that was actually inspired by Lori Lilly, the woman that I mentioned earlier. It was called attitude, aptitude, and appearance. Wow. What is your attitude to that? Because mm-hmm. as you've heard the old adage on attitude, attitude is everything. Do you know aptitude? Do you know what you're talking about? Mm. Your appearance. How do you look? Are you well? Are you well kept? Are you well kept? I mean, is it you know? Is it you know? Did you did you shave today? Yeah. I tell my son all the time because he's he's on air a lot, and uh, I said, Cam, I watch these guys on air sometimes. These young guys, they think it's okay to have a, a stubble. I'm gonna clue yeah. you in. It's not <laughs> for the general public. Sure, it looks cool and whatnot, but to me, it's almost, it's not insulting, but it certainly is disrespectful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, you didn't have time to take the razor on your face, put on a top, you know, open collar is nice with a jack, whatever it may be. But even to this day, when we go on a first appointment, I wear a suit mm-hmm. and I mm-hmm. know I'm going to walk in and somebody's going to be in flip flops in that place. Yeah. Doesn't matter. So it's like again, it goes back to what your mother told you. you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's not it's not always about some complex theory. So so that 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 would be my my uh, mm-hmm. my answer to that question. Yeah. Very nice. The key takeaway is you can never be overeducated or overdressed. Awesome. And um, I didn't mean? come up with that. <laughs> I just you know what I did. Yeah. I mean, I already did that. You know what I nice. Means? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm already meeting you. <laughs> what does R and D mean? What is our what is our, our research and research and development? <laughs> no, rip up and duplicate. 
Nice, nice, so you, nice. Rip up and duplicate. To rip up and duplicate. Anything I say. To you. Very nice. I'll do. I'll R&D Neil. <laughs> there you go. Awesome. And you see, know, let's face it. There really are no new ideas. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah. I mean, do we have yeah. to watch another Bachelor or Bachelor in Paradise mm. or mm. Bachelorette? Bachelor, you know, it's like my good. Of course, I don't watch any of it. I've never. Yeah. I've never. I can. I can say to you with all honesty. I've never mm-hmm. seen a real reality TV show ever. Oh, Survivor's oh. been on 35 years. Never seen an episode. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's move forward then. Neil, were there any specific challenges you faced during your transition from the hospitality industry to the corporate world? And how did you overcome them? If at well, all, if first, you see. My first foray out was uh, I, I, was, I <coughs> sold uh, uh, athletic footwear and apparel in New York. And I really sold products that nobody wanted. So one of one of my first tips when you go into positive activity on the business development side of positive activity, you got to sell something that somebody wants. You can't create your own market. Now, now there could be a uh, as I'm talking about as a salesperson only. Not I'm not saying I, I want I want to stop all the creative thoughts of young entrepreneurs that are inventing things that nobody ever thought of before. But I let them think about them, them figure it yeah. out, and mm. I'll go sell them. Right? Mm. So, yeah. uh, so, so, it, so that was a challenge. And I, you know, when I was, you know, uh, living, you know, living in New York city, I loved it. It was great. Um, uh, learned a lot, learned a lot about, you know, myself and how to get around and, and all that, but uh, I think I think that I think the biggest takeaway is, you know, how are you, how is whoever whoever you're going to work for? Again, I'm speaking as a salesperson. How are they invested in your success? Right? Is it just kind of like, okay, go have at it. Good luck. Hope it all works out for you. Or is there some guidance, some mentorship? You know, and that that to me, that to me is is key. To uh, to your success, mm-hmm. so uh, that was so because and that so that was a challenge for me. And that, but I but I overcame that, and I went back. I came back to the uh, Boston area, and so I got back on track on what I knew. Mm-hmm. Right, so I I, I I I I knew a friend of mine that was working for a food distributor as a sales manager, and I said, "Listen, can you get me in?" So he brought me in. Uh, I was starving, so I had to go back behind the bar to work on weekends in order to, you know, in order to have money. And, uh, but I love that, you know, I was, I, so I, I went back and, uh, and then I got started and then I used, I was able, I, it was a competitive environment because you had, we worked for this company called SS Pierce, which doesn't Pierce, which doesn't exist anymore, but you were competed with Monarch foods and Cisco and whatnot. And it was all, it was always very price driven. So you had to have, you had to be, you had to have something in order to get an order, and and my thing was my soft skills that I learned as a bartender. I showed up. I was nice. I was well presented. I was organized. Mm-hmm. I had my yeah. stuff ready to. I had my stuff ready to talk about. I knew what I was talking about to a limit, you know, because there was hundreds of thousands of products in the, uh, in the food distributorship. Yeah, and so, uh, but I all one of the things. So a key takeaway from that is. Don't fake it till you make it about product knowledge. If you don't know, be honest and say, you know, I don't know, but I, but I'll, I'll, I'll find out and I will get back to you. And then be sure that you get right back to them, right? Yeah. You get the answers, and you get mm-hmm. right back to them. That's respectful of. That's respect for their time. They saw you. You didn't know what you were talking about. Get the answers. Make it happen. Let's move forward, and here comes the next question. Can you share an anecdote or a challenging situation that taught you a significant lesson about sales or the corporate environment? So, in in as a bartender or or as both, both. Okay, so one of the things that I learned uh, early on is, and and it's again in the chapter on taking ownership when a business problem arises. The harsh lesson is being right is overrated. Don't push your rightness on on someone. Like you think, okay, no, no, no. So if a problem comes up, start here. What was my role in it? How could have I done better? 
you know, don't just lash out and say, you know, you know, say, well, you know, the guy in the guy in the truck didn't pick it right. This, the, as a matter of fact, the customer should should never even know that you had the problem. They may they may, oh, this didn't show up. Okay, no problem. Make sure you happen. Make it happen. Take the onus to to, to correct the code to go get the product to do whatever it is and and keep it seamless and away from the client view. Does that make mm. sense? Yeah, okay. yeah, absolutely. So I'll give you a, I'll give you a bar example. Mm -hmm. My friend Dennis Mayer, who I haven't seen in years, and I love it. so. Shout out to Dennis if you're watching this podcast. Call Neil. <laughs> we have Dennis was a brilliant guy. Didn't know quite know why he was working in the bar with us, but uh, he was also a good bartender. And, mm. uh, brilliant guy, and he um, he poured. A woman asked for a uh, vodka martini, straight up. Ah, mm, 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 mm. So he pours the vodka martini straight up, just as he always has. Mm. Put it in front of her. She took a sip. She goes, this isn't dry enough. Mm. So Dennis comes over to me <clears throat> and he says, I've been doing this for 20 years. I've never put a drop of vermouth in a martini. <laughs> mm, 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 mm. So what does he do? I get in an argument with the woman. I can say, oh, no, this, I, oh, I never put any vermouth in here. This is very, or he grab a shaker glass, fill it up with ice, pour the, pour the vodka in, demonstrate the vermouth bottle doesn't even come in his hand. He shakes it up, stirs it up. You get how, you know, James Bond <laughs> shaking it up, stirring it up. And, she, and he puts it down in front of her, Saints. This is good. <laughs> Visual. There is that. I mean, I, I this is I've I've done so many of these interviews now, and if, if that if 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 that piece mm -hmm. get across to people, and, and don't get me wrong, I'm not a I'm not a I'm not an overly patient guy, you know, yeah. in certain aspects of my life, but I have all the patience in the world for a customer because I believe. The old adage, the customer is always right. <laughs> now, we all know we can't, the customers can't be unreasonable. Yeah. You know, that's that whole nother kettle of fish. As if an example, if she said, nope, still not dry mm -hmm. enough. Okay, there's nothing I can do now. I've shown you, I've demonstrated, we don't put vermouth in the vodka bottles. Vodka. Done. <laughs> Loved it. <laughs> Simply loved it. Yeah, I, I love the conversation and especially the story that you have narrated is so well. And I think uh, there is a solution for every problem. And I think coming up with the solutions is important irrespective of what profession we are in. That's my key takeaway. Now let's talk about the key takeaways of from your book, okay, which you think are greatly beneficial for aspiring salespeople or individuals that are aiming to succeed in their careers? Well, I think it uh, you know, bears repeating, and I think I am repeating myself on this, but uh, I think you have to get your process, your algorithm, your whatever you want mm. to call it, uh, and, 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 and adhere to it. Uh, at least if you start something, well, they say 21 days to change a habit. Uh, I say 90 days. On any new process, now maybe you can tweak it along the way, even as you as you go. But uh, get your positive, get your pot, what we call positive activity process down, you know, and and follow it. We 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 like to start our day with a positive mindset um, because and we and there are there are tried and true, scientifically proven techniques to help aid in that. And uh, we we teach those, and then so you you take care of those before you get you open your inbox and get all annoyed with what the day is going to bring, and then follow follow your process. So if you're going if you if you make a if you make a, a deal with yourself that you're going to make send you know twenty prospecting emails, or uh, you know uh, send lump send some direct mail, and oh by the way. I'm going to tell your audience. I don't know if it's if they're all technical in nature or what. Most mostly direct, technical. Yeah, yeah. Direct mail is up in 2023. 
Wow. <laughs> if you really want to get a hold of some, if you really want to cut through the digital noise that's out there, send mm. them something. Make it lumpy. Mm. Put the pen in there. Make it dimensional. Those are the things, and that's what we prescribe in our so in our business development process, we we subscribe to the theory of seven. Mm -hmm. That it's going to take you seven significant touches. Now mm -hmm. in the digital world, it's a lot more from what I understand. I don't know what they are. I'm not gonna I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not very digitally savvy. I've got my son that manages all of my my digital stuff in my book, and he's brilliant at it. Mm -hmm. But even he, he'll go, Oh, it's still a, it's still a crapshoot every time you do it. Here's what here's what's not a crapshoot. As a matter of yeah. fact, you know who um you know who uh, Mike Rowe is? <laughs> do, do you know who Mike Rowe is? Uh, no, I I I, I Mike don't know. Rowe is, Mike <laughs> Rowe is the guy. I don't know if you've ever seen the show Dirtiest Jobs. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I haven't gone guy. to it. Yeah, he's, mm. he's world renowned, and he's he's uh well, we sent him a kit. We got a response ah. today. Wow. You know, how many, how many, how many, how many, how many correspondents do you think that guy, a guy like that gets in the, mm. in the, uh, in the, in the course of a day? Mm. So we, again, so we talk about getting your mind right and then having your business development process, having structured, structured campaigns for follow up on people that you meet, right? You meet somebody yeah. at a cocktail party and mm. you talk about what you, you talk about what you do and they're interested. We might be able to use that. Mm -hmm. Well, here's a clue. Here's a tip for you. They're not going to be sitting by their phone waiting for your call tomorrow. Yeah. No. You have to put them in queue. How, how are we going to follow up? And it demonstrates that you actually have some interest in doing business with them. Mm -hmm. That you sell them something so you have your own process. So you have got your in the can process. But you should also you should also be looking out for opportunities to send them things that are germane to their business. Mm. Here's what we do, but here's how we can help you based on this article I I I, I read and break out a uh, hold on one second, break out the old mm -hmm. tried and true highlighter, <laughs> right? And yeah. highlight it for. Draw mm. attention to what you're trying to tell them, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then and have your promotional items. Make sure you've got something with your name on it, something mm. that's going to that's something that's going to be around their desk. Here's our little calendar we send out to all of our customers. You see what that says it there? Yeah, the sun? yeah, yeah, yeah. Neil. Neil, right? yeah, yeah. Right. We send these to our our customers every year. They call us. Or email us in December and say, I haven't got my calendar yet. Now, they forget we <laughs> send it in March. Mm, we send mm. our calendars in March because guess what? That's different. Yeah. We're doing something different. We're not doing what everybody else does. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So creativity. So when you've got your mind right, mm -hmm. you're, in, you're in a place of positivity, which then opens your mind up for solution providing divergent thinking creativity and it yeah. doesn't you don't have to be an artist i'm not an artist you know you know you know what does it take what does it take to, to to get a get an article off the internet and print it off put a um put a, put a <laughs> hi, highlight it highlight the passage you want them to see send it to them and oh by the way track it so you know when it lands then make your phone call then send you then send your text then send your email whatever that may be and don't forget the phone mm. now you don't in this in this in this world i would suggest that if you are going to call somebody mm -hmm. that you have never called before you should ask him if it's okay to call yeah that would be the respect for their time yeah I, I do that. I'm a little bit passionate about that. Huh? <laughs> we lost last year. Yeah. A little small company. We lost mm -hmm. a million dollar client. Oh my god! Imploded mm -hmm. on us. No, we didn't. Mm -hmm. We didn't do anything wrong. We whatever. They just they went away. They went out at seventeen dollars in July public. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in January they were trading in the cents. <laughs> so we've had to replace that business. No, it's mm -hmm. not easy. Even you know, yeah. it's not easy. We don't we don't sell half million dollar pieces of software. 
yeah. you know, this is this is a you get back a million dollars worth of business in our business, you got to do a lot of prospecting, a lot of a lot of highlighting, a lot of whatever it may be. And that works. And we're awesome. I would suggest we're about we're probably half to three quarters of the way back on that. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Awesome. Excellent tips. And uh, this has been great conversation so far. And it's time to add some more excitement, Neil. So get ready as we dive into a series of intriguing rapid fire questions to spice up the episode further. So all you have to do is uh, answer those questions crisply, okay, without thinking much. If you're ready, I'll kick off the second rapid fire. Sure. Let's have it. <laughs> okay. See, can, my... see, how, see how my extemporaneously, my <laughs> extemporaneously. Extemporaneous speeches today. Yeah, 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 yeah. Love it, love it. And if you could have one gigantic billboard anywhere with anything on it, what would it say? It would say respect. Mm, awesome. And what is one thing that you are really bad at that you wish you were better or good at? Well, I'm not really bad at it, but I'd like to be a better musician. Mm, nice. And can you describe yourself in just one word? <laughs> and what is your favorite thing about living in the 21st century wow Jeez. i mean you know why you know what it is i get to be here ah. <laughs> yeah you know indeed. the likelihood that we'd be here at this time yeah, it's, you know. yeah. absolutely I, I think that's a great thing uh, about this uh, current uh, time for sure and here comes my next bullet. If you could have any superpower, what would it be and why? Uh, I'd like great healing power for, I have a son with autism. So I'd like to have great healing power. Mm, I wish you get it soon. And uh, here comes the last bullet, Neil. What is one electronic gadget or a fantasy gadget that you like to see or invent yourself? I think, I think based on what you've... Uh, Based on our conversation, you can see I'm I'm kind of really old school. So it's uh, I would I you know it's it, I you know it's uh, I would suggest oh goodness me well I think the, the invention or this discovery I think I'll go back to what you know my my son's affliction is and it's, mm-hmm. it's autism but it's also mm-hmm. he has apraxia. Is what what affects his ability not his ability to speak and his fine mm-hmm. motor skills. So I like an invention mm-hmm. or discovery, let's say, that allowed him to speak with his mouth. Wow, wow! I'm sorry to hear that. It's so. Oh, he's doing great. Still, no, I, I, no, I, he's I, doing. Wanna, I, I don't want to end it on a bummer, Nabi. <laughs> uh, as a matter of fact, if you've got two seconds, I'll tell you. He yeah. is communicating with us. He yeah. communicates through spelling. Mm. He spells. So his fine motor skills aren't there. Mm-hmm. Uh, front motor cortex isn't mm. working with his apraxia, not telling, mm-hmm. not telling the sending the signals to the mouth and the tongue and all that, but he mm-hmm. can point. So I had I and I'm I'm lear- my wife has been very diligent and has done a lot of speaking, a lot of communicating. Mm. I've started the last three weeks. Mm. I at yesterday I read on the lesson on cells. And mm-hmm. it was a biology lesson, and and the and the acronym DNA came up, mm-hmm. so we can mm-hmm. add, so I read him the lesson, and uh, the 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 provide my uh, my instructor who was watching me, you know I said you know what should I ask him? She goes she goes, ask him what DNA means. Mm-hmm. Guess what? He spelled it out. Wow! He knew what it meant. Awesome. I don't know how he knows. Yeah. <laughs> Super. Yeah. Very nice. So, Very nice. So and that <laughs> that's a great rapid fire. Let's get back to the mainstream. And uh, what will be your advice to someone just starting their career in sales and drawing from your own experience and the lessons in your book? One piece of advice. Get the basics down before you mm-hmm. chase the shiny new red tech toy. Wow. Get your bait. Get your Blocking your tackling your fundamentals down. Mm-hmm. Super nice, very nice. And uh, before I let you go, how is your experience being hosted on the Guiding Voice platform? Did it meet your expectations or any feedback oh, that you'd lovely. like to share? <laughs> yeah, it's been awesome, man. You're very 
very prompting questions, very, uh, very great conversation. You got a lot of me, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. I did. I did. Do? Absolutely. In, in fact, I'm thrilled to have this conversation. Initially, I was skeptical, like how bartending to sales. But uh, after engaging in this conversation, it was truly enlightening for me. And uh, personally, I had a lot of takeaways. Thank you so much. So the one thing, the last thing I'll leave you with is the difference between bartending and, and sales mm -hmm. is in bartending, mm -hmm. the customers come to you. Mm. In sales, you got to go find the customers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the linchpin. That's the part that people, so you have to be able to, you have to be able to go and make it happen. You got to, and you have to take rejection and you have to be thin skinned and, and all that because you know, behind the bar, you're the star. Everybody wants to come and see you. Yeah. You put a great <laughs> drink. Take care of me and all that. But if you go out and sell something, it's like, oh, here comes another, here comes an insurance salesman. Who wants to talk to them? Nobody. But a good yeah. insurance salesman has their process. Super. Fabulous. Thank you so much. And I really appreciate you taking time to join me today and sharing your valuable insights. And also thanks to Cam uh, for facilitating this, <laughs> for scheduling this and making it happen. And thank you once again, Neil. And have a fantastic time ahead. And I look forward to hosting you again in future and wish you all the very best on your book. I'm sure it is going to do really well and it is going to become a chat buster. Congratulations Let's again. Well, <laughs> sing it from the mountaintops, Naveen. <laughs> Guard tips on Amazon and Barnes & Noble. Let's have at it. Come on, guys. Get out there and one. Write me a nice review. I think you'll like it. Absolutely. And, the, and you'll find the link to the book in the show notes, guys. So please grab a copy. And uh, once you read, definitely leave a review. That is going to help Neil in terms of understanding the feedback and also coming up with the uh, next version, maybe. <laughs> All right. So thank you. And uh, friends, that was our episode with Neil Rogers. And uh, before we jump into the fun trivia section, we have a quick request. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our podcast because subscribing keeps you updated on new episodes. And also, if you have loved this conversation and found it useful, request you to share with at least three of your friends or colleagues who would also like regarding voice. So please spread the knowledge and help others grow just like you. And your support means a lot. Let us create more content for you and also for our community. And let's learn together on this journey. Now, let's talk about the trivia. You know, we had amazing conversation about bartending to sales. So I thought I would share you a few facts around salespeople. And here comes the very first fact. The longest serving sales representative, Joe Girard, holds the Guinness World Record for, the, for being the world's greatest salesman. And he sold... 13,001 cars at the Chevrolet dealership between 1963 and 1978. So, salute to him. <laughs> I think wow. he's been a great inspiration. <laughs> Joe, Joe Girard, you say? Yeah, yeah. Joe, Joe Girard. That's right. <laughs> that's a tough gig. I'm yeah, sure Joe, yeah. I'm sure, I guarantee you, Joe does the same things every day. <laughs> For sure. Every and day. here comes, yeah. And, and uh, here comes the second one. First saleswoman, the first female salesperson in the United States was Lydia Pinkham, who created a herbal medicinal tonic in the 1870s. And she personally sold the tonic and gave health advice to her customers. And the third one is about the elevator pitch, the origins of elevator pitch. And the term elevator pitch comes from the idea of a salesperson needing to deliver a concise and compelling pitch Within the time it takes for an elevator ride, typically around 30 seconds to 2 minutes. So that is the secret of the elevator pitch term and uh, it comes from the sales origin. So likewise, if you are aware of any interesting trivia related to sales, I would love to go through your comments and you feel free to comment it on YouTube if you are watching it there or if you have found this episode on social media platform and if you are listening to this on your audio platform, please uh, share your comments either through social media or you can email us also and that's it for today's episode thank you so much for tuning in and also for being part of our awesome community we would love to hear from you so do not hesitate to share your ideas and also feedback through our social media or email our email address is the guiding voice for you at gmail.com and let us create content that resonates with you i'm your host navin samala a lifelong learner and my goal is to have impactful conversations that are that improve not only your life but also your career and stay connected as we journey together until next time take care 
stay inspired and remember the future holds great things because the best is yet to come goodbye for now see you all in the next episode with another amazing guest take care